Hey guys, and welcome to our fourth video in the Get Started with Pi series. I'm Jenny. And I'm Cave. So far, we've done a lot in our series. Remember, if you're following along at home, you should pick up one of our Raspberry Pi starter kits so your experience will match what you see in these videos. So in video one, we unboxed the Pi and connected it to peripherals. In video two, we explored the different things that come pre-installed on the Pi. In video three, we connected the Pi to the internet. In this video, it's going to be a little different. Cabe's going to do all the work. Here you go. Thanks. If you're just joining us, our Raspberry Pi is in the condition we left it in episode three. Connected to it is a wireless keyboard adapter, the Wi-Pi Wi-Fi adapter, and our eight gigabyte SD card with the Pi Noobs image installed. So we need to just do a bit of setup in order to prepare for this project. So first, we're going to take the Pi out of its case so we can have access to the GPIO pins. The top and bottom kind of just simply snap off. And just a reminder, we're using the parts that come in the Element 14 Raspberry Pi starter kit. So the parts, like the case, might look different than the kit you've purchased. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output, and you'll find this method of interacting with the Pi is used in a lot of projects that can be found on Element 14 in our Raspberry Pi projects or on other Pi websites. GPIO pins are generic. They can be used as input or output devices and can be controlled with programs. We'll be connecting to these pins with a Pi Cobbler Kit. And that's available on our Element 14 site from our friends at Adafruit. The Pi Cobbler Breakout Kit has three main pieces. It has a 26-pin ribbon cable, a ribbon cable socket that plugs into the Pi, and then plus a PCB that the ribbon snaps into so it can be attached to the breadboard. The PCB is printed with information about the pins that stick into the breadboard. The label shows you which pins are ground, which carry a 5.0 volt power supply, and which carry a 3.3 volt power supply, and those with numbers that can serve in input or output pins. Now, in order to protect your Pi from possible damage, you don't want to use the 5.0 volt power supply, especially to send signal to the Pi. Now, the other piece of equipment that we've mentioned is the breadboard. The one we'll be using is the Adafruit Pi dish, which includes this clear acrylic board. Now, some mounting posts to hold the Pi securely in place, plus the breadboard itself. There's a video on the Adafruit site illustrating how to set this up. You just have to see the link below. Some people call these solderless breadboards, since you can connect a variety of things without actually having to solder them all together. Each of these little holes in the breadboard is a socket where you can push in things like LED lights, buttons, or jumper wires. Breadboards usually have two columns of sockets in the middle. Ours has one side labeled A through E, and the other side labeled F through J. All the sockets in each row are connected. On the outside of both edges are these long power rails. Usually the blue line is used for ground, and the red line is used for power. So let's go ahead and connect this Pi cobbler to the Raspberry Pi. You'll notice that this ribbon cable has a white line down one side. The line represents the side of the ribbon that should be connected to pin 1. On the Pi, pin 1 is in the corner of the board, so you just plug in ribbon with the line on the corner side. But just be careful because you can actually plug it in backwards. Okay, so now that that's connected, let's connect the other end into the breadboard. Do this so that one side of the pins is plugged into the column on the right, and one is plugged into the column on the left. Now let's connect power from the PCB to the breadboard. We'll be using the 3.3 volt supply from the Pi. So you just find a pin labeled 3V3, and then run a jumper wire from that row to the positive rail on that side of the breadboard. Then you find a pin labeled GND on the other side of the plug, and run a jumper cable from that row to the blue row on the opposite side of the breadboard from the side that has the power jumper cable. All right, I want to jump in. I wanted to point out, uh, if you all noticed while I was doing this, I placed the PCB ribbon cable connector on the breadboard in, in the middle section. There's a tab cut out on one side, and the, ribbon, the other end of the ribbon cable will key in exactly. You can't put this in backwards, it won't let you. So I'd just like to point that out. Yeah. And just a word of warning, GPIO pins are not designed for large currents. And I know this may seem a little bit confusing since we just told you we'll be using a 3.3 volt supply for the breadboard, but the voltage is different than the current. So for example, if you live in the United States, the outlets you use all supply, what, 120 volts. Mm -hmm. 
but if you plug in a cell phone charger to the outlet, it's going to draw much less current than, let's say, if you plugged in a toaster or space heater. So we just have to pay attention to the amount of current we're sending through the board. Pretty much anything other than small LEDs and inputs to other digital integrated circuits can't be powered directly from the GPIO pins. You may want to grow your skills in creating projects with your Pi that do require more current, and Element14.com has several projects and accessories that can help you do that. But for now, we're going to stick to the basics. I'm going to interject again. Yeah, go for it. On the, on the Adafruit um, Pi dish, there are these mounting posts on, on this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the Raspberry Pi on this side so it's mounted securely. So there's four posts. They are used to hold the Raspberry Pi down in place. So what I'm going to do is just wedge one side in on, on this side. And the other side, the posts are loose so I can move them out of the way. You can do it, Kate. I can't do it. Yes, you can. <laughs> one side's not loose enough, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. okay. right. What was I? Oh yeah, one side is loose. There you go. There you go. Actually, it is actually kind of cool just to have it floating there for doing like little projects. So. Yeah. It's nice to have these mounting posts. Some of the older versions of the Raspberry Pi don't have uh, the typical mounting through holes on the, on the PCB itself. So the, this will just help hold it in one place. So when you turn on the Pi, it's going to be providing a 3.3 volt power to the breadboard. So next, let's use pin number 22 to create a circuit to another row on the breadboard. We'll use another jumper, jumper cable from the row with pin 22 to an open row on the breadboard. On the same row, we'll connect a resistor from the positive power rail to an open socket in this row. Then we just need a button. <laughs> Connecting. We add a resistor in this, in this position connected to the positive voltage. It acts as a pull-up resistor. So from the Raspberry Pi's perspective, it's seeing a logic one, in other words. It's, uh, it's seeing a, a positive voltage in other words. The button only really fits in one way. It has to span the gap between the two columns so it can break or complete the circuit. The button has four wire prongs. The path of electricity goes in on the bottom of the button and comes out on the top of the button. So we're going to plug the ground wire for this circuit in on that row of sockets. As you can see, there's a twist in the ribbon cable. That doesn't matter. It's OK. I'm just going to do a, a quick review of how to assemble a Raspberry Pi. Just place your SD card in. For us, we're going to hook up the Wi-Pi wireless adapter. And the wireless keyboard adapter. It's a good idea to assemble your Raspberry Pi before powering it up. Just make sure that you have everything that you need placed in the USB slots. Make sure your SD card is placed in securely and make sure the HDMI cable is plugged in. On our screen, we're using HDMI port 1 or HDMI 1. We made sure we set that on the television first before powering on the Pi. Now I'm going to plug it in. Power light on the Pi just went on. That's all the wiring. Now we just need to set up the Pi. As we mentioned in video three, getting online, it's a good idea to update your operating system regularly, especially if you're starting a new project. So to do that, power up your Pi and make sure you're connected to the internet. Then open your LX terminal and type sudo. Ready? I'll wait for you. So you type sudo space apt dash get space update, and then you hit return. 
you type in sudo space apt dash get space upgrade and then hit return. Now that the Pi is updated, let's be sure the Python development kit is installed. You type sudo space apt dash get space install space python dash dev. Now when that finishes, we need to install the rpi.gpio. To do that, you type in sudo space apt dash get space install space python dash rpi dot gpio. Then you'll be prompted to enter y to confirm the install. Next we need the actual python code. Now that's available for download from the page below. You can open this page on your Pi to just make it easier to cut and paste. Remember, everything in Linux is case sensitive, so make sure you don't accidentally capitalize a word, especially a command. Python's also quite particular about its indentation. That's just how it understands which commands work together, so be sure to set up the file exactly how it's displayed. One way to create a Python file is to use nano. Type in nano space pi dash audio dash button dot py. Well, and you'll see a screen editor like this. Once you've created the file, press Ctrl X, and then you'll be prompted to save your work, so press Y, and then press Enter to save it as the same name. The last thing to do to your code is to make it executable. If you don't do this, the program won't run. So you have to type in chmod space plus x space pi dash audio dash button dot py, then press Enter. And finally, since we're making a sound file play, we'll need the sound file itself. It's called cow.mp3. It's also available for download below. So just make sure you save the mp3 file in the same directory where you created your Python script. We're all set to run the program. In Alex terminal, type sudo space python space pi dash audio dash button dot py and press enter. Now when you see the text, when you're ready, please press the button press the button that you installed on the breadboard. And just like that, the audio file should play. And that's it, you've created your very first Pi project. It's pretty cool. Now, if you run into any problems, just double check that the Python file has no typos and all the indentations exactly match what's in the code file. Of course, you can also take advantage of the expert members on the community for assistance. Use the link below to post a question in the discussion threads, and one of our community members will probably be able to help you troubleshoot your issues. So now that you know the basics, you're ready to try other simple projects. We've actually provided links below to other basic projects below. And that brings us to a close for this episode. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and make sure to come back again to see our final video in the series where we'll connect more accessories to the Pi and extend what it can do. Until then, I'm Jenny. And I'm Cabe. Have fun with your Pi. Bye. There's a link to start a discussion on this page and every page in the Get Started with Pi section of illnet14.com. We have over 200,000 members, including lots of Raspberry Pi experts who will be able to help you out. <laughs> <laughs>